Ryan. What's going on, guys? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, I believe he'll be back tomorrow. Let's take a look at what we have going on in the markets today. Uh, the ES Mini up about 1.06%. The Russell down slightly. Uh, NQ's up 1.3%. The YM up 0.7%. Gold, we're seeing just a little bit of a pull down back in gold. But, of course, we have seen this uh, meteoric rise in gold over the past uh, month, I would say. Well, beginning March. One miner that's super interesting to look at. Now, Harmony's down a little bit. But, I mean, this has been... You know, from around this time period, something like a 48% rise. It's nuts, right? I mean, this is actually going back more into, like, December and stuff like that. But this has done so well over a certain holding period uh, that we've had. Uh, really impressive to see some of the gold mining stocks do well. Newmont, now we are down again today. But, again, I remember we were talking a little bit. We had a caller come in right around this level. Uh, again, this is on some lower volume coming down. And we just shot it back up. So it's good for the gold guys at the time being. Of course, we're going to have Tim Ord on a little later today. Um, and I'm sure he'll have plenty to say about where gold is going. Of course, him and Tom were calling uh, this kind of move up in gold for quite a while. And uh, we saw it. I mean, that's pretty nice. I mean, check this out. Like, all-time highs on this thing. Just right under that 2200 level. Silver itself not doing as attractively, uh, just off about 1.68% right now, still around that 2430 level. Copper, uh, right under $4 on the contract. Crude, crude's getting locked out around this level at 77.69. This is nice. You know, everything that we're looking at today, it's important to look into the context of the CPI that had come out, right? And we'll take a look at that in a second here. Uh, this was the commodity that I was worried about. Right. And now, of course, this is volatile, so it's not part of core CPI. Um, and I was concerned that we were going to see increases in oil prices. Right. And we really had seen these guys stick around these low 70s and then to shoot up. And we've stayed uh, pretty consolidated in the 77, 68 area. Uh, and we're actually a little bit lower today as well. We can talk a little bit about why that's getting locked. But first, let's look at CPI. Um, again, this is the. CPI was a little bit higher, right? But the context of all this is not for May cuts, right? Obviously not for March cuts because we're already into March. But believe the market had really been looking at a June cut, right? And some of this stuff with CPI was not bad uh, looking forward towards that. Okay, so let's take a look at food. Unchanged, massive, right? This is, this is pretty good. Food away from home, about the same. Uh, let's take a look here. Energy commodities, obviously up, right? This is a little bit what I was concerned about with it, up 3.6. Uh, however, this is down on the 12 months adjusted. Uh, let me take a look at medical care services. So down slightly for this, which is positive. Transportation up minorly. So, I mean, this is, this is pretty good news, right? Uh, owners equivalent rose only 0.4% on the month. That was down from 0.6% uh, in January, you know, this is all decent stuff, right? If we're looking for a June rate cut, okay? And if we can maintain this kind of tight, you know, kind of program that we're on and we see inflation not being as bad uh, month over month, we'll be in a, in a good situation. And again, I think that's a lot of what this pricing in uh, is doing. And of course, if we get any rate um, decreases, you know, we're off to the races, as Tom says. Uh, quite interesting. Let's take a look at Tesla, uh, 178.80. They had some issues. Their autopilot, along with some of their competitors, had been tested by some body, and they were received poor ratings for all of it. Of course, this is in its nascent stage, and I am sure we will see this, uh, this technology get better as we go on. Uh, but additionally, you're having a lot of competitors coming out of China with this, uh, and I, I think we'll see that become an issue for them in the coming years. And, and Tesla is the best poised, in my opinion, uh, to combat uh, these new Chinese EVs that are about to be hitting, like, Europe and, and probably, to some extent, America, unless we have some kind of tariff on them or embargo against it. But um, even Tesla themselves are saying they're, they're worried about it, right? So, I mean, what does that kind of say for the rest of the industry? Uh, Steel Dynamics, 131, of course, some pretty volatile movements, uh, up to 
70 in great. Dollar has been down. It cracked that 104 to 105 area, and we are at 102.97. Of course, we are up a little bit right now, but not a big deal. And the Qs up 1.34%, 443.25. I mean, even when you get some hot CPI, right? I mean, you, you still have the, I mean, obviously the Qs are up today, right? Our futures are up. The Russell just is doing Russell things. Uh, but the NQ is up in the, the Dow futures. So, you know, uh, I think the market is pretty confident that we'll see a rate cut uh, coming pretty soon. Give me one second uh, to get my timer up. All right. Let's take a look at some stories. This is what I wanted to say regarding Tesla. Oh, also, I want to say, too, if you because I just dealt with this beforehand, and this is just an off thing, but, you know, we, uh, you know, we talked to some people from TD Ameritrade, which is now Schwab Network, and uh, we use Thinkorswim here. I was having some issues logging into Thinkorswim. It wasn't recognizing anything, uh, even when I went to reset my password. So I was talking to the guy, and what happens, I guess, sometimes it just became, uh, my, my account name became locked uh, because I logged in at too many different places. So if you're experiencing that, it is a pretty simple fix. You just got to know what to ask for. Anyways, I thought I was going to have a day without a trading platform. I was going to figure out how I was going to do that. All right, we'll take a look here. Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving technology and nine other assisted driving systems marketed by major automakers received poor ratings from the U.S. Insurance Institute of Highway Safety in a new study released on Tuesday. The IIHS, a safety research arm of the insurance industry, also said there is no evidence that the autopilot uh, or other assisted driving systems uh, have real-world safety benefits based on crash data, right? I would be really interested to see that crash data, right? Like, is it... You know, how much of the autopilot was at fault regarding that? Yeah, I know there were some stories around what GM was trying to do uh, in California, and they had some situations. But I believe uh, the major one, which is uh, the the car hitting a pedestrian, the pedestrian actually was drunk and fell into the car. Uh, so I'd be kind of interested to see um, how much of these autopilots, you, you know, were actually really at fault for it. Uh, we're able to look at insurance claims data. We have been able to look at vehicles with and without these systems and determine there is no reduction in claims as a result of these more advanced systems. And really, okay, so here, by comparison, there's evidence that automatic emergency braking system cut rear end collisions by 50% and cut incidents. I have that on my car and it is grading, but it does work. Anyways, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have Basil Chapman on with us next.